In this video, Phil's going to tackle a common power pivot DAX problem where total rows of measures don't add up as you'd expect and how to fix it. He'll be demonstrating in Power BI, but this solution also applies to DAX measures in Power Pivot for Excel. Typically in visuals like this, we expect the totals to be the sum of the individual rows. So for 2011, you expect that total to be the sum of all the months and so on. But sometimes when we write measures, we get values in these total rows that are unexpected and look wrong to us. I'm going to explain why that is the case and how to write these measures correctly. I'll just show you my data. It's just some typical sales data, order numbers, order dates, customer numbers, and then values for subtotals, taxes, and totals due. This is connected to a date table in a one-to-many relationship, so nothing out of the ordinary here. Let's say I want to look at months where I've met a particular target. Let's say I want to see months where my total due has exceeded $3 million. I've already written a measure for total amount, which is just the sum of the total due column. And to write my monthly sales measure, I'll just create a new measure. Call it monthly target met. And if my total amount is greater than 3 million, then give me a one. And I don't need to supply a value if it's less than 3 million, it'll just give me a blank. And then add that to my matrix. And you can see in 2011, I've got October, which exceeds 3 million. In 2012, I've got January, March, May, June, July, September, and December, and so on. But you can see straight away that the totals for each year don't look right. Now, obviously, 2011 looks okay because October is the only month that exceeds 3 million. But in 2012, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 2013, I think there's 10. But you can see that each year is only showing a 1, and the grand total at the bottom is also showing a 1. So what's actually going on? Well, let's just look at the DAX and try to understand what it's doing or what we've asked it to do. The measure is being worked out based on the filter context for each one of these cells. So for January 2012, I'm saying, is the total amount greater than 3 million? Well, yes, it is, because January total amount is 4,458,000. For February, it's only 1,649,000. So I'll get a blank and on and on. March, total amount is 3,336,000. So we get another one. So we understand what it's doing there. And if we take that understanding then to the totals row, what we're asking it here is if the total amount is greater than 3 million, give me a one. Well, the total amount is greater than 3 million. It's 37 million. So the DAX is actually doing what it should do. It's just that intuitively we expect it to be doing something else. We expect it to be summing up all of the months in 2012 and giving us a total here, not just giving us a one. We, we're expecting it to give us one, two, three, four, five, give us a seven. So how do we fix this? Well, the answer is that we need to use an iterator. We need to use sum x. So let's edit our measure and we're going to use sum x. And the first parameter for sum x is a table. What table are we going to give it? Well, we want to give it all the values from my date table. And I want to give it the month year column because the granularity of this measure is monthly. I want to pass in the month year column. If I press enter, and now we look at the measure, you can see that the totals are calculating correctly, both at the month level and at the total level, and at the very bottom at the grand total level. So what's changed is that we've said, for this filter context, so for 2012 here, iterate over the entire year of 2012 for each month, and then sum using sum x each month where the total due is over 3 million. Same for 2013. And then of course, when you get right to the bottom for your grand total, it's sum x is iterating over the entire table for every month in every year. And we have 20 months where we've exceeded our target. And just quickly, I'll show you, if you're not sure what values is doing here, we can just copy that out. And then in modeling, add a new table. 
Let's paste that in because values creates a table and have a look at what that creates. And as you can see, it's just a single column, single column table with the month year from the date table. So that's what values is creating. But then that of course is changed or filtered by the filter context within this uh, matrix. So I'll just get rid of that. Now, if I wanted to do something similar for, say, a daily target, it's a very similar kind of thing. I can just grab the code from my monthly target, create a new measure. And I'll just paste that in and make some changes. Funnily enough, I'm going to call it daily target bit. And we want to use sumx again, but we're going to change this first parameter, this table. Don't need to pass in the month year i just need to pass in all the dates so i'll just pass in the entire date table and i'll say rather than three million because that's a bit high for a, a daily target i'll say if we've exceeded twenty-five thousand for our total due on each day give me a one press enter and then add that to the matrix and you can see straight away that that looks to be correct. So in May, I've got one day that's exceeded 25,000, uh, May 2011. In June 2011, I've got four, July six, and so on. At the moment though, we can't look down, we can't drill down into the dates. So let's add the dates to the rows. Now, if I have a look in May, you can see actually I've only got one day in May and it does indeed exceed 25,000. For June, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and the total for June is four. So our daily total target is also working correctly. So that's how to deal with apparently incorrect totals in your reports. Remember, DAX is doing what you've asked it to do. If you're getting something you're not expecting, it's probably because you've not written the DAX correctly. So have a good think about what it is you're asking it to do and see how you need to change it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.